Lord, we thank God for His grace and mercy. We thank God for the opportunity to come to you with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though it's the sundown hours, we are an hour late. But an hour late is better than never. Because God's got nothing but love for you. God loves you so much. That's why we're bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. God is love. And in him is no hatred at all. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And God is love and in him is no hatred at all. So we come with the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we stay faithful and loyal to the gospel because when the Lord Jesus Christ returns he is returning for a loyal church he is returning for those that are loyal to him you see how the world is turning out now you and I both know we're living in the last days you and I know that the return of the Lord Jesus Christ is very very near we are really, really close to what the Bible calls Armageddon. We are really, really close to the final conflict of the nations. We are really, really close to the Great Tribulation. There is a period of time ahead of us. It's called the Great Tribulation. And in the Great Tribulation, there's going to be unprecedented. God bless you. God bless you. Say hello to Pastor Vasil for me. Yeah. There is a time of Great Tribulation coming upon the world. Yeah, there is a time ahead of us of unprecedented suffering called the Great Tribulation. But before the Great Tribulation kicks, kicks in, those who are faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ are going to be taken out of this world by an event called the rapture. And the rapture is that simultaneous disappearance of everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Every person who calls on the name of Jesus on the day of rapture is going to be taken out of this world. And this is why we remain faithful to the gospel of Jesus. We're not here to talk about ourselves. We're not here to talk about anybody else except the Lord Jesus and He crucified. That's our message for you today. And as we read from the Word of God, the Word of God tells us, it says, hold fast to the freedom that Jesus Christ has given us. And that's what we come here to do. We come here to share with you that freedom come to share with you the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. Because you see, there are those who might even want to be loyal to the gospel of Christ, loyal to the Lord Jesus, but they just don't know how to do it. They don't know where to go. There are some strongholds and some spiritual forces pulling certain people back from being loyal to the Lord Jesus and being faithful to him. And so we bring the gospel because the gospel of Jesus Christ is full of power. The gospel of Jesus Christ is powerful enough to set you free so you can be free to live your life after the Lord Jesus. The gospel of Jesus Christ is powerful enough to set you free and to give you that liberty the liberty that you need to be able to be faithful to him and so we bring you the gospel of Christ and as we read the word of God as we read from the book of Galatians in the book of Galatians we're told stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and don't be entangled again unto the of bondage that's what Apostle Paul is saying to the Galatians. He said the Galatians were those type of people who thought that they had to do certain religious exercises 
to earn their salvation. The Galatians thought that if they, if only they could do certain religious doings or, or deeds, that they would earn eternal salvation. So Paul wrote to the Galatians and let them know that there's absolutely nothing that you as a sinful person can ever do to earn eternal life. Eternal life is found in Jesus. It's only when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only time you can have eternal life. Because the Galatians were talking about you have to keep the law of Moses. You have to eat certain foods. You have to pray this way. Say, I have this how many times a day. You know, you have to be circumcised and all of that. That's what they were talking about. God bless you. But you see, salvation and eternal life is not as reward of what you can do. Your religious deeds are not a prerequisite for salvation. Doing good is good, but it's not good enough to earn you salvation. So Paul is writing to the Galatians, he's saying that, listen, your deeds, your good deeds are not good enough to earn you eternal life. Eternal life can only be received through the blood of Jesus and what Jesus did on the cross. So he's saying to them, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Praise the Lord. So Paul is talking to these Galatians. He's letting the Galatians know that salvation is not because of the deeds of the law. It is not because of what you can do as a person, but only what Jesus Christ has um, done on the cross. So you see, your salvation right is in the blood of Jesus. And in the blood of Jesus Christ alone, there's nothing that you and I can do because of our, because of our fallen human condition. There's absolutely nothing that you and I can do to earn ourselves eternal life. We had to depend and we have to depend on the Lord Jesus. And what Jesus Christ did on the cross is what earns us eternal life today. So Paul writing to the Galatians, because the Galatians are those people who are questioning and, and, and asking themselves, what good deeds do I have to do to earn eternal life? What good deeds or, or what religious exercises or what religious obligations do I have to keep for me to earn eternal life? And Paul is saying that none whatsoever. Religious deeds and good deeds are not a prerequisite for eternal life. They are a result. They are a result of eternal life. You do good deeds because you are saved. You don't get saved because you do good deeds. You get saved when you put your faith in what Jesus did on the cross and the blood that Jesus shed on that cross is the only way you can ever come to eternal life. There is no eternal life anywhere else because anywhere else you don't see a man being risen from the dead, do you? You only see it when Jesus was risen from the dead. So you and I know that eternal life is found in Jesus. Before I go any further, I declare the blood of Jesus into the very foundations of this here town of Oldham for mass evangelism, for the preaching of the gospel, for soul winning, to set you free from the spiritual pool that's pulling you down there instead of going up there. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into the heavens above Oldham and the atmosphere above Oldham for the pulling down of principalities and powers for the pulling down of those demonic strongholds holding you back from entering into the kingdom of God. I speak the blood of Jesus. For the pulling down of the spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places and for the pulling down of the rulers of the darkness of this world. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into your heart and soul. 
if you can hear me, if you are within the reach of my voice, I speak the blood of Jesus into your heart and soul. I declare the blood of Jesus Christ into your conscience. If you are within the reach of my voice and if you can hear me, I speak the blood of Jesus into your conscience for the receiving of the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God is the only one person who can tell us and reveal to us who Jesus really is. And I speak the blood of Jesus to the very gates of Oldham, both the physical gates and the spiritual gates for the triumphant entry of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, into this here town of Oldham. I place the blood of Jesus at the very center of the town of Oldham, both the physical center and the spiritual center, because when the Lord Jesus is raised up and is lifted up, he will draw many, many unto to him. I speak the blood of Jesus into every house in Oldham for the peace of God to rule and reign in every house in Oldham in Jesus' name. The statement I want to make today is this. God wants you to live a life of freedom and liberty. And I say this because when you look at how much the human race has been subjected under demonic bondage, you know that this statement is good news. You know this is the gospel. God wants you to live a life of freedom and liberty. So God put the man in the Garden of Eden. He says to Adam and Eve, any tree in the Garden of Eden you're free to eat. That is a God of liberty and freedom. For him to even say you are free to eat of any tree in the garden, including the tree of life. But freedom has its own boundaries as well. So God says to Adam and Eve, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. You know why God say that? Because Jesus Christ is all the knowledge you need. God was saying to Jesus, was saying to Adam and Eve, as long as you know me, you know eternal life. As long as you know me, you know what eternal life is. You see, and it's the same thing today. The knowledge of good and evil is not what we need as a human race. We need the knowledge of who Jesus is. Because as you're looking at Jesus Christ, you're looking at the image of God. When you know Jesus, you know forgiveness of sin. When you know Jesus, you know the way to heaven. When you know Jesus, you know reconciliation with God. When you know Jesus, you know what it means to stand in the presence of a loving and holy God. When you know Jesus, you know eternal life. So God is saying to Adam and Eve, any tree in the Eden, you are free to eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it. The day you eat of it, you will surely die, because all the knowledge you need is the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know why the world is in a mess today? The world is in a mess today because we forsook the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know why kids are stabbing each other today? The reason why kids are stabbing each other to death today is because the nation has rejected the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You want to know why um, drug, drug addiction is a really big problem in the nation today? The reason why drug addiction is a real big problem and a big mess in this nation today is because the nation has rejected the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do you want to know why divorce is on the up like never before? It's because the nation has rejected the knowledge of Jesus Christ. God put the man in the Garden of Eden. He says, any tree in the Garden of Eden, you are free to eat. Can you imagine all the fruits in the world? God is saying, you're, you're free to eat, but just not one. The one of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You eat of that one, you will surely die. And Adam and Eve decided to rebel against the knowledge of God. They 
decided to uh, ignore the word of Jesus Christ. And when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve died a spiritual death instantly while they were dying a physical death gradually. Because you see that even after Adam and Eve had eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they went ahead to have Cain and Abel. So you know they didn't die straight away. But God said the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that very same day you are going to die. So you know that Adam and Eve, the day they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's the day they died. But when you look at it, after that they went to have Cain and Abel. So what kind of death did Adam and Eve die that day in the garden of Eden when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The death they died was a separation from God. You see, your definition of death is not God's definition of death. When God is referring to death, he's referring to total separation from him in hell. That's what God means when he says death. When God is talking about death, it's total separation from him and that eventually leads the soul to hell. When you talk about death, you're talking about six foot into the ground. But when God is talking about death, he is talking about total separation from him. So if you are separated from God, if you know that you don't have a relationship with God as your loving father through what Jesus did on the cross, it means that you are spiritually dead. You are physically alive. Yes, I can see you put one foot in front of the other as you walk home, as you walk wherever you're going. But in reality, you are dead in the spirit. You say, how can I be dead in the spirit? God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's three in one. You are soul, spirit, and body. That's also three in one. God is three in one, and he made you in his image, so you are three in one. But the spiritual side of man died in the Garden of Eden through the sinfulness of Adam and Eve, and that's what we as an entire human race inherited from Adam and Eve. The reason why you pray religious prayers and still feel like you don't have a relationship with God is because you are still dead in the spirit. The reason why you fast and do all these religious exercises and still feel like you don't have a relationship with God is because you are still dead in the spirit. You see, you can do all the good things that a good person is supposed to do, but as long as you've not been to the cross of Jesus, as long as you've not been nailed with Jesus on the cross, as long as you've not put your faith in what Jesus did on the cross, you are still dead in the spirit. I see people walking about as empty shows with nothing of substance on the inside. This is why people are trying to feel that emptiness inside them. The spiritual deadness that is on the inside of us. We are trying to, to do something about it by drugs. We're trying to do something about it by earning as much money as we can. We're trying to do something about it by as many sexual partners as a person can fit in a day. It's because we're spiritually dead and we realize that there's something missing in our lives but we don't know exactly what it is so we are grabbing at everything that we can grab so that we can feel that emptiness and that void that's on the inside of us but i'm here to tell you that it's only about the blood of jesus only the blood of jesus only the cross of jesus only what jesus did on the cross only what jesus did on the cross the death and the resurrection of jesus when jesus was buried you were buried with him when jesus was risen from the dead you were risen from the dead with jesus and as you put your faith in the resurrection of jesus you will be raised together with Jesus from the dead and you will come out from being spiritually dead and you can live in the spirit. Amen. Amen. You see people hurting each other is because humanity is spiritually dead. Yes, we are physically alive, but in the spirit, spiritually we are dead. And let me tell you how humanity died in the spirit. Humanity died in the spirit when we sinned against God. Humanity died in the spirit when we rebelled against God. No, I'm okay, brother. I'm good, you know. I'm good, brother. You know. You okay? You okay?
I'm gonna get a rope now. <laughs> <laughs> loving in him we'll find meaning of life in him we'll get answers to our life questions you come to the cross of Jesus be made alive together with the Lord Jesus Christ and then you will have the freedom to enjoy all the things that God has for you I said earlier that God wants you to have the freedom and the liberty to enjoy the life that he has given you because God is a loving parent you know that as a parent right nobody will give birth to a child and as they're giving birth to a child they will say I want this child to suffer I want this child to have the worst life ever any mother giving birth to a kid right to a baby they wish for the best for their child they want their child to have the freedom, the liberty to enjoy life. They want their child to have the finer things in life. Every parent wants the best for their children and God wants the best for you because God is a loving father. You see, the moment you deny God as a father, you are denying yourself the love that God has for his children. And this is speaking to those that will say that, oh, God cannot have a son, like God cannot do whatever. God can do whatever he wants to do. If God wants to have a son, God will have a son. If God wants to have a daughter, God will have a daughter. God can do whatever he wants to do because he is God. But what we're saying is that you can come to the cross of Jesus. You can put your faith in Jesus. You can confess the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and humility. You can come to the cross and you can say, Father, forgive my sins, especially the sin of unbelief. I am repenting and I am turning towards you. I am turning to you. I am changing my mind. I renew my mind with your word. Because now I realize that you are a loving God. And you want the best for me. You want eternal life for me. You can confess the Lord Jesus. You can confess your sin. And you can reconcile with God. And God will wipe the slate clean. You can start again. You can have a relationship with God. As your loving father through what Jesus did on that cross that's God's invitation to you that what is God is giving you today God is extending his arms to you and God is saying to you my arms are open God is saying to you you can come and we can sit down and reason together God is saying to you you can come and you can confess your sin and as you confess your sin and place your faith in Jesus, I will forgive you. God is saying to you today that if you confess the Lord Jesus, and if you confess the Lord Jesus, and if you come to him in repentance, and if you come to me in humility, I will wipe the slate clean, I will forgive you, I will wash you in the blood of my son, and we can begin again. The day your sins are forgiven, oh my God, the, 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 the freedom that comes with that. The day your sins are forgiven, oh 
my God, the lightness that you will feel in your spirit. You see that burden that's pressing down on you. That burden we call the guilt of sin. The burden we call the fear of death. The burden we call the fear of hell. The day your sins are forgiven, oh my God, the love of God will flood your heart and the peace of God will surround you. That day you will know that you have a relationship with God because you have been made right by the blood of his righteous son, Jesus Christ. Or you can come to the cross of Jesus and that sin that is weighing down on you like a ton of bricks, God will lift that up from off your shoulder. That bondage of sin that's driving you crazy, God can set you free from that by the blood of Jesus. You will never find forgiveness of sin anywhere else. And believe you me, God is a holy and a just God. God will never let sin slide. Every sin will get punished. The word of God tells us that no sin shall go unpunished. The word of God tells us that God is a holy God. And if God is a holy God, then the sin has to be punished. We all deserve the punishment of sin. We all deserve to go to hell. But thank God for Jesus. Jesus Christ came. He died on the cross to pay the price for adultery. Jesus Christ came. He paid the price for our sexual immoralities. Jesus Christ came and he paid the price for our blasphemies, our rebellion, our stubbornness, our turning our backs on him. That's why Jesus came and died on that cross. The blood of Jesus, that's God's payment for the sin of man. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, God took all of your sins, God took all of my sins, and he placed them on Jesus. And Jesus Christ was punished for our sin. And then God took the righteousness of Jesus and placed it on you and me. Only if you will accept it. The invitation is open. It's entirely up to yourself if you want to make your way towards God or not. But we pray that you make the right decision because whatever decision you make, it will carry eternal consequences. There are two doors open before you. One door will lead to hell. One door will lead to heaven. But that's entirely up to yourself which door you choose. So after Jesus was risen from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, he, was, uh, he, he, he showed himself to the people for a good 40 days. After showing himself to the people for a good 40 days, can you imagine a man you saw being crucified, a man you saw being buried in a grave, a man you saw being in a grave uh, for three days? Because Jesus was in that grave for three days. After three days, this man is walking the streets of Jerusalem. He's appearing to people. He's showing himself alive after being buried in a grave for three days. Right there is the difference between the Christian faith and every other religion. Because in the Christian faith, that's the only in the Christian faith, that's the only place you hear of a man being risen from the dead. In the Christian faith. So Jesus is risen from the dead. He is physically ascended into heaven. And Jesus goes up into heaven as a human being, as a man. And Jesus sits at the right hand of God. There is no other human being. There is no other person who has been treated with such honor. There is no other human being who has been treated with such respect. Can you imagine God raises you from the dead? And not only does he raise you from the dead, but he calls you up into heaven and he says to you, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So if you are against the idea of Jesus Christ being the son of God, seated at the right hand of God, God is going to make you Jesus' footstool. 
if you are hostile to the gospel of Jesus Christ as the son of God who came to die on the cross to reconcile us back to God if you are against that idea God is going to make you Jesus' footstool he says come up into heaven my son come and sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool if you wonder what Jesus is Jesus is in heaven right now waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool you can persecute the Christians all you want you can bend the villages of the Christians all you want you can do all kinds of evil to the Christians all you want but believe you me God has already said that Jesus come and sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool either you're with God or you're against him Jesus said, any man who will confess me before man, I will confess that man before my Father which is in heaven. But if any man will deny me before man, I will deny that man before my Father which is in heaven. So if a man who denies God is going to be denied before the Father in heaven, where do you think that that man is going to go? Jesus was ascended. You went and sat at the right hand of the Father and that's the position that God has for you. If you ever wondered what God has, has for you, if you've ever wondered what God has planned for you, the same way that Jesus Christ was called up into heaven by the power of God is the same way that God is calling you to come and sit with him there in the heavenly places. Let me tell you this. It was never God's intention for you to sink into depression. But it was, and it still is, God's intention for you to come up into heaven with him. The only person who has been lifted up into heaven, and can you imagine in all of the world, in the entire history of the human race, nobody has ever seen a man being lifted up into heaven and run and sat at the right hand of God. Nobody has ever seen that except in Jesus' life. Only Jesus was ascended into heaven and when Jesus was ascended into heaven, he went as a man and he went and sat at the right hand of God on your behalf. The day you put your faith in Jesus Christ, your name will appear before God. Your name will appear in the Lamb's book of life. The day you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, from that day every prayer you pray, that prayer will shoot up into heaven and that prayer will go and stand and before God. Just like how Jesus Christ is standing before God for you. The ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven is the ascension of your prayer and your cry for help into heaven. You see the way that Jesus ascended into heaven and you pray as you pray in the name of Jesus That's where your prayer is going to end up if you pray in the name of Jesus Because Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. That's exactly where your prayer is going to end That's exactly where your prayer is going to reach and I know this because I hear from the Word of God That the Lord Jesus is standing before God and is making intercession for us. Jesus Christ is praying and he's making intercession intercession for you right now as we speak the only one person who's gone up into heaven physically by the ascension is Jesus and as you put your faith in Jesus Christ when your time comes the angels of God will come to grab you and they will ascend you into heaven just like how Jesus was ascended into heaven in the privacy of your own house in the comfort of your own home you can go before god and you can say father in jesus name i believe in jesus i call on the name of jesus you can make a prayer in your own person in your own home you can pray and you can say father forgive my sins i come to you in jesus name if you've never prayed that prayer 
I pray for you right now in Jesus' name. If you've never called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I urge you to go home and do that. You can go home and you can close the door and you can lift up your hand and you can say, I call on the name of Jesus. Just do that and see what's going to happen to your life. If you do that, your life will never be the same. Just go home, lift up your hand and say, I call on the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, you've tried everything else. So why not try Jesus? You've tried drugs and that didn't work. So why not try Jesus? You've tried 10 boyfriends at a time and that didn't work. So why not try Jesus? You've tried cannabis, you've tried ecstasy, you've tried heroin, you've tried all kinds of drugs under the sun and that didn't work. So why not try Jesus? You've tried to get all the, get all the money you can, made yourself a lot of money, but that didn't bring you the inner peace that you were looking for. So why don't you try Jesus? When you get home, you can close the door with, and with no one watching, no one listening. Close the door behind you. Lift up your right hand and say, I call on the name of Jesus. I guarantee you that your life will never be the same. Because Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise turn them away. The day you put your faith in Jesus Christ, the day you come to God in repentance and humility, the day you reconcile yourself to God, that day God will put his Holy Spirit on your inside and your life will never, ever, 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 ever be the same. Can you imagine living life with the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of you? And I say this because a lot of us are living with bitterness on the inside of us. A lot of us are living with fear on the inside of us. A lot of us are living with demonic harassment in our lives. Many people are living with evil spirits harassing them. Those evil nightmares that you have, where do you think they're coming from? They're coming from evil spirits. And you know that it started, you now you can take a good picture, you can take a good camera, but I'm not asked. You can really take a good shot if you want to. Those evil, evil nightmares that you're having, where do you think they're coming from? They're coming from demonic spirits. You started reading horoscopes, and when you started reading those horoscopes, you started feeling an uneasiness around you. Where do you think that's coming from? That's coming from demonic spirits. You started to double in the occult. You know, you started messing about with the Oija board. You started calling those seances hotlines. You started calling spiritualist hotlines. And from the time you did that, there's been an uneasiness in your life. Where do you think that uneasiness is coming from? It's coming from demonic spirits. A lot of kids today double in the occult, the double in all of those kinds of black magic, you know, uh, or, uh, some even going as far as, oh, we call it white witch now. Whether it's black witch, whether it's white witch, a witch is a witch, and the witch is inspired by the devil. This is by the devil. All kinds of spiritual and demonic harassment. One minute you're happy, you're living your life, and the next minute you sink into depths of depression like you've never known before. One minute you're watching telly, and the next minute you are plunged into depths of anxiety like you've never seen before. And where do you think that's coming from? That's coming from spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. And if you're one of those people suffering from those things, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you be set free from demonic bondage. If you're struggling with an addiction, if you're struggling with demonic manifestation, if you're struggling with nightmares, if you're struggling with uneasiness in your life, if you're going through depression, if you're going through anxiety attacks, I declare you released from that bondage in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And who do you think bring that liberty? That liberty is brought to you 
by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who delivers the liberty of God into your life. Without the Holy Spirit of God in you, you will never experience the liberty and the freedom that comes from having a relationship with God as your loving Father through what Jesus did on the cross. You cannot dial the devil's number. And then when he shows up, you cry foul. You cannot double in the occult. You cannot go for tarot card reading or palm reading or any other kind of reading. You cannot go and consult a familiar spirit or a person who practices divination or consult the spirit of the dead and really expect liberty and freedom from that. If you are doubling in the watch in the occult, you are subjecting yourself under demonic oppression, and you can be set free by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ gives the Holy Spirit that permission and license and ground to work in your life. And I pray that if you are one of those people who are struggling with whatever kind of bondage, you are struggling with whatever kind of addiction. You're struggling with nightmares and evil spirits harassing you. And you know, as people, right, we put on these fake smiles and we're pretending to each other like everything is okay when we know that we're being harassed by evil spirits in the secret places. But I pray that God will set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you get home, you can ask God for the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You can ask God for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. You can do it yourself. You can just lift up your head, sitting down, kneeling down, lying on the floor, whatever. But you can say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your Holy Spirit. Because you see, religion doesn't defeat the devil. Good works doesn't defeat the devil. Being a nice guy doesn't defeat the devil. The only thing that can defeat the devil is the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood of Jesus Christ allows the Spirit of God to work in your life. When Jesus Christ was um, baptized, the Word of God tells us he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And the tempter came to him and said, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. The actual interpretation is the devil came to Jesus and said to him, since you are the Son of God, because when Jesus was being baptized, the heavens were opened. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am all pleased. So the devil knew that Jesus is the Son of God. Even Satan himself knows that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you don't know that Jesus is the Son of God, then the devil is doing better than you. <laughs> Because the devil knows. The devil knows that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you don't know that Jesus is the Son of God, I'm sorry about it, the devil is doing better than you. On the day of judgment, every single one of us will come before God. And this message will either speak for you or speak against you. Every time the gospel message is preached, there is a book in heaven, and that event is recorded. Do you see how you're feeling towards us right now as we speak, to, as we speak to you? Do you see how you are responding in your mind right now as we're preaching to you? That's being recorded in heaven. Whether your response is a positive response or whether your response is a negative response, how we are coming across to you right now with the gospel of Jesus Christ and how you're responding and how you're reacting is being recorded in heaven right now as we speak. And on that day when you stand before God in judgment, all these responses, reactions, your emotions, your thoughts, everything you said, uh, you know, because obviously you're going to speak about us when you get home. I know that when you get home, you're going to talk about that guy who's been preaching in town. And however you're going to talk about us, it's been recorded in heaven. 
when your life comes to an end. Hi, you alright? How are you doing? Yeah, you're happy, right? So what do you think about my book? Now to for the price or what? Oh really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what do you think about ties? Um, you and I? Oh alright, so what you what should you go to? Okay, uh, respond to the gospel message as it is coming to you is being recorded in heaven there is a book in heaven and any person whose life comes to an end before they sign your death certificate to say you're dead your soul will stand before God in judgment and if you ever stand before God in judgment not having your sins forgiven you would have condemned yourself to hell you would have condemned yourself to hell standing before god unforgiven sins you're condemning yourself to eternal damnation now i know that this one is not easy to swallow i know that this one is not easy to accept but let me tell you there are souls in hell right now who responded the way you're responding right now there are souls in hell right now who reacted the way you reacted to the gospel right now there are souls in heaven as well it's not an easy message to preach it's not an easy message to speak to you but you have to know that sin eventually leads a person to hell sin will lead a person to hell you come before god in judgment and the one thing that God will ask you on that day is, what did you do with my son Jesus? You see, it's all good and well for you to deny that Jesus Christ is the son of God while you're here on earth. But when you stand before him on the day of judgment, there will be no denying that Jesus is the son of God. Because Jesus is the one who's going to be passing judgment 